Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. And today, as you can see on the screen here, we're going to be checking out something new that I really wanted to share with you guys. Um, a little while back, the developers of Frontier Pilot Simulator reached out to me and asked if I would do a review of their simulator. Now, I'm going to tell you right off the bat that all the opinions and thoughts that you guys are going to hear are mine and mine alone. Um, and uh, that was a requirement to me doing this and they were perfectly all right with that. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it real quick. So the general premise of it is that we are a part of a terraforming process, basically bringing uh, or setting up a new planet for civilization. And we're the truck drivers of the future. Our job is to haul equipment and material from one location to another while dealing with the um, environment uh, hazards and, and things of that nature as we move along. Earning money, upgrading our, our aircraft, buying new aircraft, interacting with uh, different characters uh, in the environment, as well as completing one of two campaigns. You can either be a smuggler or um, part of the alien race. Um, now, I want to, once again, um, be very clear that I was very skeptical when I first saw this as it's not typically a sim simulator that I would normally partake in. But after only a short time of playing, I found myself very interested in and enjoying myself quite a bit. And I just want to share that experience with you guys now and see if I can help uh, increase the popularity of the sim. So the first thing obviously on everybody's list is going to be the flight model. So that's where we're going to start with. As this is a flight simulation, let's start with the most critical part. Um, you have two different flight modes. You have VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing, and then your standard flight mode um, as any other aircraft. So very similar concept as what we see in like the Harrier or the F-35. However, let's start with the VTOL. The VTOL mode I tend to feel is more like a helicopter. Once I started thinking like a helicopter while flying it, it became much easier and much more easier to relate it to a helicopter flight. Um, it reminded me very much of my experience in learning the helicopters in DCS world, um, which are obviously high fidelity and, and you know borderline study level, um, if not study level. So with that in mind, um, while in VTOL mode, um, you deal with a lot of the same issues that we would deal with in a helicopter flight. You have to be concerned with your descent rate. Um, you know, you have your pitch and your, your yaw access while you can roll and rock left to right. You have to cons be concerned with um, ground effect, your weight and uh, wind effect against the airframe while you're in the VTOL mode. Um, it's going to affect things like your landing and your transitioning um, from, you know, forward flight into a, you know, a, a VTOL position where you're ready to land. Um, now, while on the ground and the engine's powered off, you, uh, it be behaves more like a truck, um, which has no cost to your fuel, which is nice. So while uh, you're actually on the, on the deck, if you need to, you can drive it around and move it around a bit. Um, now, with that in mind, the... If you do lose control of your craft, you do take the risk of, you know, damaging the aircraft. Um, as um, you can see here on the screen, I started descending too fast, didn't have enough altitude to recover, and smacked into the ground and damaged the aircraft. You can have different damage locations. So, for example, if you land too hard, you can damage the landing gear or you can damage the fuselage, engines, wings, etc. And all of these that need to be repaired in one of the hangars, which we'll talk about in just a minute. After a bit of progression, which uh, doesn't take long at all, the progression of the simulator is very nice, um, which adds, again, uh, uh, it's nice to have this kind of a simulator with an ob uh, objective-based operation to it. Um, but after some progression, you earn a bit of money, you do get a quest that tells you to go and get new wings, and essentially your first upgrade on the aircraft, or I think second upgrade on the aircraft, um, which allows you to transition from the VTOL to the flight mode. Now, the flight mode, you're obviously going to expend fuel at a bit of a uh, higher rate, but you're going to be traveling significantly faster and be able to travel longer distances. The flight mode is just like any other aircraft. You know, you have your pitch and your roll, and it treats you very similarly. Um, now, with the transition, the nice thing that they added to it is you can't just pop up and transition to flight mode. You have to make sure that your airspeed is high enough to actually safely make that transition um, or you could find yourself in a, a uh, less than pleasant situation and plummeting to the ground you know, with the engines at, at full thrust. Um, the HUD is very well laid out. You have your airspeed, your descent rate, your climb, your altitude, your, um, you know, 
uh, your bank angles and things like that, your desired locations, you know, just like you would in a uh, modern day GPS. You can set your nav mode and that nav position displays on your HUD um, as your target location, so it makes it easy to navigate around the environment. Um, so it's it's really something that's that's a, a a neat incorporation of that flight simulator aspect into a very sci-fi environment. You know, speaking to the environment, you know, as you're flying around, you do have environmental concerns such as uh, you know electrical storms, rainstorms, dust storms. You know, obviously impairing your vision. You know, and you know you do get alerts and warnings from a weather system. You know that tells you what you need to do to avoid you know, to best avoid those uh, circumstances. Uh, for example, flying through an electrical storm can absolutely short out the aircraft. You lose some navigational control um, and you may find yourself flying, flying blind. Um, out of the dust storms, you know, flying them too long, they can choke out the engines and things like that that I've seen and, and you have to hope that you're high enough and the engines have enough time to recover. Um, so very similar um, aspects to what we would see um, in real world operation. So it's kind of cool to have that again that balance between sci-fi and and real world uh, flight The other thing I'll say about the environment that's really neat is The you have the campaign so you have two different campaign modes again. You have either the smugglers or the um, alien races um, But aside from that you have you know your standard cargo quests where you go from one hop to another trading materials from one location and the way that they've done that is it really caused you to sort of bounce around the map you know point a may need what what point delta has delta may need what charlie has charlie may need what alpha has you know and etc so it requires you to sort of really think about your your um, flight plan in a manner that um, a, you have to take your fuel consumption into consideration. At each location landing pad, you can recharge your aircraft or refuel it, if you will. It runs off of battery power. Um, and then so you, you have to plan your route out in a way that you don't run out of fuel, but that you're making the most profit that you can in a single, in a single spin. Right now, with that income that you get comes, you know, the hangers. And the hangers are really cool. I really like the way the hangers were drawn out. So with the hangers come a few different things. First off is repairs. Okay, again, you come into situations where you damage the aircraft, um, where it's still flyable, um, then you need to come to one of these hangers and actually repair the aircraft. And the way I like the way they did with the animation is depending on what part of the aircraft is damaged, the robots, the robotic arms that you see here actually repair that specific part of the aircraft, whether it be the landing gear, the fuselage, etc. So again, it adds a little bit more to it. Then we get our upgrades. You can upgrade things, really anything that's on the different vessel. And um, you have three different types of ships, which we'll get into in a second. But each location, each area of the map has its own hangar. And at those hangars are different uh, parts or upgrades that you can get or different customizations that are available based on where you're located. Um, and so with the upgrades, you know, you can do anything from, you know, like I said, your engines to wings to landing gears, make it more rust, more battery power, larger batteries, more powerful engines, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, again, you have that economic structure of having to balance out what you're doing with your money in a way that's going to make it most profitable for you to make more money. You know, if you just dump it all into one thing too soon, then you may find yourself with an inability to make enough money because it's less effective, right? Um, you know, for example, if you go straight to the larger engines, well, the larger engines require uh, more battery power, so essentially you're you know creating a larger fuel burn, you know, so your distance is reduced, right? And so it's things like that that make it really interesting to plan out. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about camera views for a second. You have third person and first person. Now there is no head tracking as I've mentioned before, but what you can do is use a mouse like on your Hotash, something like that, sort of like a thumbstick or anything like that, and very gently look around. Same way you would in like a first person shooter on the Xbox or a PlayStation, you know, with a game controller. And the head movement is actually very smooth. It's, a very, it's much easier to use than I was anticipating. I think the biggest thing is just practice makes perfect when you're not used to it. Um, but other than that, it's definitely suitable for the simulator itself and as you can see here I'm navigating around just fine um, now you do have the ability also to see multiple out uh, exterior views of the aircraft from a couple different perspectives you can change the camera view in your third person the camera will automatically adjust in certain situations like if you're falling too fast it will automatically lift you up to the top of it so you can see hey you're about to plummet to the floor um, so it's got a lot of uh, creature friendly things if you will 
Um, so anyway, with that being said, uh, there's a lot left to be desired from me for cameras, but it's still very nice. Now let's go ahead and talk about some of the aspects of the game outside of the game itself, as in the community, what uh, resources you have, and things that are you know in the works and coming forward. And just before, guys, I want to make sure that I stress to you guys that there's still so much more to this sim that I haven't covered. Um, you you can damage your aircraft permanently to where you have to reject. There There's tons more parts that I haven't shown you. There's uh, different ferries and different uh, quest lines. There's random quest missions that you have to do. Uh, sometimes dropping packages out in the middle of the ocean for to rescue people. I mean, just it, it goes on. So it just there's so much that if I were to go into every little thing, it would just this would be an hour long video. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at what things are with the community. All right, so first coming into Steam here, you can guys can see what the main page already looks like. So first off, they're doing regular updates and actually a whole lot faster than it seems than they're planning. So you can click on the updates, gives you information of their latest updates, what screenshots, things like that, what you can expect to see. So they've added some new creatures, but even even then, to, to speak on their their attention to the community as one of you suggested they named them fireflies you know um talks about some different decorations for christmas that were available that was kind of cool but one of the ones that actually really caught my attention was if you come down here to the december 9th okay tutorial new islands bug fixes and roadmap and there's a couple of these that really caught my attention in the first line, a new update arrived. Thank you all for your support, ideas, reviews, and tests. Most of you were unhappy with the tutorial process, so we updated the existing one based on your feedback. For that, we added two small islands where you'll uh, be led to practice your landing and get used to the in-game flight mechanics. Okay, that's huge. Also, we fixed a lot of bugs and pass you know with passengers and most you know the randomly flipping. The new year is coming. We are making a plan for the next year on how the game will be developed and making a roadmap. We collected the most common requests from the wish list. Take some time to prior please take some time to prioritize your requests and help us deliver what's important to you. You can follow the link and get there. Guys, that's awesome. That really is. I mean, the fact that they're paying that close attention. This is why it's almost actually there's no almost about it. This is why it's worth it to engage in some of these simulators and upcoming uh, programs when they're smaller like this because they're listening to you you know that they're not all about the big bang they don't have their you know locked down tight you know where you can't make suggestions and and help shape the simulator and, and that's that's huge but the other thing you have is you can come over here to guides right <clears throat> And these are all different guides for the simulator. And one of the things they have them it's got its own wiki page. You know, we can click on that and let's see here, we can just come here. Sorry, it launched on a different monitor. Give me a second. There we go. And I mean it breaks everything down for you step by step by step. It's constantly being updated. It's on the wiki, so it can be, you know, um, upgraded by the public. There's a bunch of different links to other sources. Um, this is a really awesome community. I've been really impressed with it. The Discord is awesome. Um, they do New Year events. They do yearly events. They do um, some pretty consistent community events. Um, they try to keep you guys engaged. They try, to, or I should say, us engaged. Um, it's really been a, a, quite an impressive experience so far, and I'm really, um, really happy that I was invited to to test this out. And uh, I think anyone who's been watching my channel long enough knows I, I don't, you know, I have no problem calling things out when they're when they're junk. I, I don't. Um, it just doesn't do anybody good, and especially with the pandemic and everything going on right now, I'm certainly not going to um, push somebody into buying something that they don't need or want. I mean, and the nice thing is, is that the um, price point for it is actually really fair. So give me a second here, and I'll find it for you. There it is. Oh, helps when I spell correctly. Twenty four ninety nine. Okay, and you know, I think this is absolutely a simulator that as it comes into fruition and really gets to its peak, I think it's going to be worth far more than twenty twenty four ninety nine. Far more. Um, they're really coming a long way. And like I said, you know, if, if they get into things like head tracking with track IR or, or, or VR, it, it's going to be really impressive. Um, and, you know, I, I've only had a limited experience with it, so I'm, I'm still absolutely learning. I'm still figuring out how to tweak it to, to make it even better. Um, and I'm really enjoying the experience. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys consider um, supporting this project. You know, take a gander at it. Um, and uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments fields below. Um, and uh, I will 
absolutely love to provide feedback back to the community. So anyway, guys, I hope you guys all have a wonderful evening, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care.